Yeah, dude. Thank you. We did it. All right, guys, we just shot a pronghorn this morning. Super pumped. That was my first pronghorn I've ever shot. We ended up finding a really cool spot with a water hole, a bunch of pronghorn coming in there, and we got one. So, heading back to camp now. We're gonna go pack up our stuff, and we're gonna be heading to Wyoming. It's gonna be the start of the deer tour. So, season opens September 1st in Wyoming. We've got three tags there. Me, Jake, and Warb all have tags. So, Ben and I are gonna head down there today. We'll have a few days to scout around down there. So, that's the plan. We're gonna head down there, try and find some bucks. Yeah. All right guys, we just got permission to uh, walk into a piece of public that looks really good. There's a big reservoir back here, lots of good habitat, and the only access to it from public land is like six miles in. So we looped around, asked a couple landowners if we could walk in from their property to that, to the public, and we just got permission from this guy back here. He said, yeah, go ahead and walk in there and check it out. Just don't block traffic, so. Real nice guy. Real nice guy. So we're pulled off the side of the road and we're about to head back up in there. Check it out. Last one was a nice, really nice buck. Really nice? Yeah. I seen one of them was a buck, I didn't know how big he was. That's sweet. They're here. They are here. Alright guys, me and Ben made it way back into this piece. And once we got back here, we ended up bumping a nice buck. And then a smaller buck that was with him both still had velvet on but they're white tails we've been driving around different areas in this in our units trying to find white tails for the past couple nights and have yet to see one until today but this is a huge chunk of public and the main access is like six miles away through some pretty rugged terrain so this big reservoir down here is kind of the main reason we wanted to get back in here big source of water lots of cover lots of food for them so Seems like a pretty dang good spot. There's definitely one big buck in here. We'll see what else we see tonight. Hopefully we hopefully we can get eyes on a few more deer. Down right, right down here it looks sweet. Yeah, all this that runs off this rim. I think I'll be able to see a lot right here. Yeah. You could hop up in that one or go back. You might even want to go back around. Because you can see some different stuff in the back over there too. So, um, so Ted and I decided to, to separate and he's staying over where we were just at, but I'm coming farther down this mountain. I call it a mountain, I think they just call it a bluff, really. I'm gonna try to perch real high so then I can, uh, so then I can see down into this water and see if there's any deer coming to the water. We've seen three nice bucks back here so far. Ben went down this ridge a little ways to get a little bit different angle at this pond and see way down this creek bottom right now. But there's bucks in here like crazy. So, pretty pumped. And we've got a beat on three nice bucks. Oh man, I'm excited. Definitely a good start to the Wyoming trip. Glad we got out here a couple days early and got some scouting in. It's definitely paying off. This is like being in heaven. <laughs> this is awesome. 
I'm filming that little, I'm filming the big one, and I'm like looking at Ted, and he's not even moving. Like, he's just looking at this little one. I'm like, Ted, there's a big one coming. He didn't say anything, and he's just looking at this little one, pulls back on the little one. <laughs> I was just like, locked on it, because like, I didn't know if he was going to spook or what, but I knew he was coming in close enough, so. Ted's all about the bird in the hand. <laughs> <laughs> I just get locked on. I don't know how many times they're just going to keep coming back, so it's, I don't want to get a freaking problem. We're out in the middle of wide open Wyoming right now and as you can tell the wind is whipping through our campsite. Roy and I had to pick up that tent over there at True Value because our first tent got blown to pieces pretty much in South Dakota. Greg and Mindy just rolled into camp. Me and Ben have been in, here in Wyoming for the last three days I think. Mm -hmm. Just came from South Dakota after hunting pronghorn. We're eating it right now. We got pronghorn, mashed potatoes. The prongs. Mindy's eating something over there. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm eating your fake mashed potatoes. Oh, yeah. Well, those are pretty good. But we got a good start. A couple more days to scout. Hopefully, we'll have a beat on a few more bucks here before season opens up. Congrats on your load. Boys. Thank you. Did you eat her all yet? Uh, we ate all the good stuff. Back straps. Oh, you left the neck roast for me, no, huh? Everything tastes really good. Here you go. Compliments of Greg Godfrey. Well, unfortunately, I think I left my battery and my solar panel at home. You did bring it? Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. That's great. This makes you feel so much better. You probably stressed out. about it the whole time. I was definitely thing. stressed about it. I texted Ted, I asked him if he grabbed it, and he's like, nope, don't have it. I'm like, oh crap. I didn't realize I walked out and forgot it. That would have saved me a lot of headaches if you knew that one right here. <laughs> yeah, right, like he gets stressed, buddy. <laughs> he's ready to get in there and get some shut eye, boys. Well, this is gonna be me and you in here, buddy. Big bear, boy. Nice and soft. <laughs> oh, but it's like sleeping on a cloud, boys. It's like sleeping on a cloud. Another one bedded over there in the shade. They just don't care. No. Those honey badgers. Finding lots of muleys and pronghorn, but not many whitetails today. Like, man, it looks like there's something alive down there. It's a bull elk. <laughs> He's just out here in the middle of just nothing. Nothing. Nice bull. Mm -hmm. We're in Wyoming, guys. Me and Jake got in the camp last night after dark. Got out today. It's two days before the archery season opens. We got here early so we could drive around, do some scouting, get familiar with the area as we usually do. But Ted and Benjamin already found some bucks in, in a spot down the road here a few miles. So Jake and I are just covering ground today in the truck and looking for spots. The challenge we have with this particular area in Wyoming is it's really open. It's very flat and right now is really, really dry out here. Me and Jake are looking at this creek drainage here right now and there's a little bit of water flowing in it, but you can tell down inside the drainage itself, all the vegetation is way greener. And we just hopped out of the truck and we've got deer tracks and turkey tracks and stuff right here. I'm assuming this is the type of terrain we're gonna be dealing with because most of this area out here is vast, wide open, rolling, sagebrush, rocky hills. It's much more suitable habitat for mule deer and antelope than it is whitetails, but there's still a few whitetails around and we got three tags to go and kill them. So, see what we can come up with today. What's going on, buddy? We got some jiggling going on underneath this truck. We're probably all right. Some of the creeks are normal, but the new creeks, those are the ones that make me nervous. Yeah, that's a tough unit we're in. There's not a lot of whitetail habitat in it. There's a decent amount of public land, but most of it's landlocked. We were just talked to a couple of different landowners both of them were super nice, but they gave us more information about where the whitetails are at. Most of them are on these river bottom and creek tributaries, 
most of the whitetails live on private land or they live on public land which is extremely difficult to access so we asked one lady she told us no um, then we asked another family if we could go they told us yes as long as we paid them a trespass fee so we've got to pay them like a hundred bucks to use their property to either hunt on their land or use their property to access the public land we got their number we may give them a call at some point here in the next day or two if we decide to go that route but in the meantime we're going to keep cruising around and checking spots out but that's just the that's just the reality of what we're dealing with here that's the tags that we got those are the ones that were available so it was either stay home or go hunting so we decided we were going to go hunting and we're going to try to figure out a way to do it one thing i will say too like we ain't as y'all have seen in the past we ain't afraid of hunting on private land we don't care we're excited to be going hunting doesn't matter to us cruising around all day long trying to get access to some of this public and we've had a little bit of luck seen a pile of mule deer and antelope and a couple of whitetails today just doe and two fawns but we've got several phone numbers that we need to call tonight of landowners that own land around landlocked public see if we can access through their ground we're gonna jet down here quick and hopefully try to get to a high spot to glass before it gets dark. Jake. We're going back in where we're wanting to go. on public for sure though because that mm -hmm. that goes the line goes somewhere right through there and then it actually cuts back so the back side of that river over there and most of that bottom right there is public i would assume if there's one buck back there there's probably more yeah it's the day before archery season opens out here in wyoming me and jake didn't get much sleep last night because the wind was blowing the tent over so apologize if i look a little groggy this morning but and grouchy. yeah probably both of us are a little groggy and a little grouchy this morning one of us is grouchy at least oh i don't know about that i haven't given you hardly any crap yet today we still got a full day ahead of what we're doing right now we found this little piece of public yesterday that's got some of this river bottom creek bottom habitat in it so we got up this morning to come over here and glass it up and we saw some does down here below us and I've been looking through the spotter for the last 30 minutes and I just spotted a buck way back there, like a mile back there, but he's on public. All the ranchers said that's where the whitetails were at, where was down on the river. We haven't seen very many, but this is what we got to work with. So I guess this is where, where we'll hunt. He was by that little tree, you're pretty sure. Yeah, but he was moving to the right. There he is. I'm surprised right the bucks aren't more bad sort up than they are, but they're kind of spread out all over the place down through there. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's the one we want right there, friend. Right down along the edge of the river. Jeez. Pretty good, huh? Yeah. Pretty nice. He do. He'll work. That's for sure. He's got a little kicker off of his right main beam. Kind of like a little drop time thing. Jake spotted a real nice buck down here right along the edge of the river. And we've been filming him with the phone scope here for a few minutes. We've caught glimpses of him a couple of different times. I think it's just one buck, but so far we've seen three bucks, one really nice one, and then a bunch of different does and fawns up and down this creek. And public kind of weaves throughout down through there, but 
Most of the deer we've seen have actually been on public for whatever reason this morning. I don't know exactly how we're going to go about hunting them, but it's definitely a good sign to be able to sit up top here and watch them. All of them were right within 20, 30 yards of the river, though. And the river ain't but 10 yards wide, so I would think we'd be able to get in some good setups down there. We're going to go see if we can get permission to walk through this guy's property over here to the south. But I think that's what we're going to spend the day doing, just trying to go get more info. Either permission to walk through or find a few more backup plans in the event that somebody's here tomorrow. Because there's a bunch of seasons that open in Wyoming on the 1st of September. It's 5 o'clock. We're heading up to a spot that Ben and I checked out earlier today. We actually came in here around noon and hiked up here to look down over this creek bottom. When the creek crosses the road, there's quite a bit of water. So if we hiked up there within 15 or 20 minutes, we saw a d couple does stand up down in the creek bottom. They stood up and kind of worked towards the cottonwoods, probably to get in some more shade, but it didn't take long for us to see a whitetail. So we're gonna go back up there for this evening. We might all three split up and do some glassing along different parts of the creek. Hopefully spot a buck up in there, but been far and few between with the whitetails so it's good to have another spot with whitetails in it that's for sure There's a bachelor group of three bucks. Two of them are really big bucks. Like a mile and a half down the creek here. They're on the on the property we can hunt on. This bottom right here is mixed in public and private. And we've got access obviously to the little sliver of public right here where we watched the buck this morning. And then part of the private we have permission to be on, part of it we do not. Most of the public land in the unit, like I said, this morning is landlocked. Between what Ted and Greg and Benjamin have found, and what me and Jake have found so far, I think there's like three public areas that we can access, true public access. Most of the stuff is landlocked and we have to get private permission to get into it. But because there's deer all up and down this river right here, we got the public and a little sliver of this private land that we can hunt. And these bucks just happen to be on it. Windy. Mm -hmm. Looks like we're in good shape though. We're not sure what the wind's going to be doing in the morning, so I think we're just going to start right back up here and then go from there. We might try to dive down in there, kind of similar to what we did on Zach's hunt last year, just observe from the top and if we can make a move, make a move, but just want to stay up here in the morning so we can observe down there and right down below us. That way we'll probably have a play for the evening if we need it too. So see you right here in the morning. There's a lot of bucks down through here. It's going to be pretty awesome, I think. <laughs> Say when. When. Making our, hopefully our lunch for tomorrow because that means that we had to stay in there most of the day. We're just gonna be ready to, that's something we messed up uh, a couple of years ago. We just, we've been getting better at bringing enough stuff to the field where if you have to stay the whole day, you're ready to. Like we've had to leave for water and food and stuff. So preparing for battle tomorrow. 
Warp's got his tent buried down in a little gully there because she kind of tipped over on us at about 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah, I bought a crappy tent. She's a little top heavy. She don't take the wind very well. I what, know. What are you going to call it in the air? Tails. You're up, baby. Good. I'll be able to sleep better tonight then, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm hunting in the morning. You're hunting in the evening. Ooh, for days. Okay, we can do that too. We can do morning. that. Yeah, I think so. Okay. We'll see you guys in the morning. You guys <laughs> will see Aaron in the morning. Home sweet home. See you guys in the morning. <laughs>